As hosts of this year's UN Climate Summit, the UK has a major role to play in setting the course that will determine the world's future. It's clear that the government is taking the challenge seriously and is open to opportunities. In launching the COP26 private finance strategy last week, Mark Carney, now the PM's finance advis advisor, observed, this turns an existential threat into the greatest commercial opportunity of our time. Private finance will undoubtedly have a key role to play in ensuring a successful transition to a net zero economy. And Carney's plans to make finance the force for good that it should be are very exciting. However, real leadership requires that we keep our own house in order. The Committee on Climate Change warns that plans are significantly off track. And nowhere is this more the case than in transport. The government recognises this and has committed to publishing a transport decarbonisation plan. <clears throat> the purpose of today's workshop is to explore what would be a credible and politically deliverable framework for decarbonising transport. In understanding the scale of the challenge, we need to consider the equity implications and the wider political context. What does net zero mean for global Britain? For the levelling up agenda? For a stronger economy? And how do we reconcile competing objectives? The other big announcement last week was the High Court ruling on Heathrow expansion. This is a landmark ruling, which means that climate change will now have to be considered in assessing all major infrastructure projects going forward. This opens the door to challenges to roads and other airports. A big win for climate change, change campaigners. But what does it mean for global Britain? What impact will this ruling have on future airport expansion in the UK. And if we don't expand, will we be flying less or will other airports be filling up instead? It's politically a lot easier to stop a third runway at Heathrow than it is to make it more expensive to fly. <coughs> this Heathrow decision underlines just how critical it's going to be to secure international agreement on reducing aviation emissions. This is an area crying out for greater international cooperation and must be a priority for COP26. So what about the government's levelling up agenda? Are there contradictions between policies consistent with delivering on the net zero target and delivering for those who only lent the Conservatives their vote in the last election? The freeze in fuel duty is a perfect case in point. And the budget on the 11th of March will be a litmus test. The nine-year freeze in fuel duty has caused an additional 5 million tonnes of, of greenhouse gas emissions by encouraging more trips by car and fewer trips by public transport. However, the freeze has been a benefit to many on low incomes who are dependent on their cars. At the same time, in undermining public transport networks, the, fuel, the freeze in fuel duty has been damaging for some of the very poorest in our society. These aren't easy choices politically. But the answer is, it's not a zero-sum game. Encouraging greater use of public transport is an excellent way, both of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and of improving opportunities and, 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 and life chances for everyone in society. And if we're going to get the value out of that five billion local transport fund that the Prime Minister announced recently, we're going to need some nudges to get people out of their cars. So what about a stronger economy? There are divergent views on the extent to which economic growth can be compatible with meeting our, car our carbon reduction targets. 
But what is absolutely clear is that a compact, mass transit orientated model for urban development is the best chance that we have of, for, of decoupling economic growth from carbon emissions. Finally, the fact that we're living in a global economy is being laid bare right now by the market turmoil we're witnessing in reaction to the coronavirus. If this triggers a worldwide recession, will we lose focus on tackling climate change? We can be sure that if the economy tanks, climate change will be downgraded, just like it was a decade ago with the last world economic recession. So, these are just some of the issues that we need to consider today. And I'm absolutely delighted that we have such a fantastic lineup of speakers to help us navigate some of these really difficult issues and challenges that we face with decarbonizing transport.